back. We are nearly at that halfway point, and maybe it's a good time to do a check-in on your finances. Just to make sure you're on the right track to end the year strong. Nobody wants to hear that, do they? <laughs> right? <laughs> Financial instructor Michael Mazarin from the Retirement Education Foundation is here to tell us how do we do this mid-year financial review. And it really, you should kind of bite the bullet and do it, right, Michael? Uh, should we all be doing this? Everyone should be doing this because people set goals in January yeah. and then like clockwork by February for a lot of people, it's on, honestly out of mind. But really, if we're going to set the goals early, let's check back in. We're halfway through the year now. Let's check back in to see how we're doing on things like spending, on saving, on budgeting, because if we just set goals and then forget about it, we're mm -hmm. not going to stick to those goals. Yeah. I mean, the, that is with anything, right? right? We should be doing a, a mid-year check. And really, so with inflation, now inflation is falling. And this is a little tricky for a lot of people because even though inflation is falling, inflation measures the price increases. So inflation is falling, meaning prices are still rising, just not as fast as they were before. Okay. So 3% inflation versus 8% inflation we saw back in 2022, prices are still rising, just not as fast as they were previously. So if, if we had a budget set up in January for food and gas and entertainment, and and prices are up between January through now, we're probably spending more than we think. And that's especially when inflation's high, that's when budgets start to get leaky. We're, we, we assume we're spending 300 bucks a month dining out. And then we check our credit cards and go, oh, holy smokes, it's actually yeah. closer to 450 or $500 a month, whatever the numbers are. And so trying to nail those things down can go a long way. Is it better to look at percentages or a dollar amount when you're setting your goals for where you want to be? So either can work. Really, a dollar amount kind of helps keep people grounded. Mm -hmm. I think percentages can get a little theoretical for some people. Mm -hmm. So looking at the dollar amounts can help people can help you keep can help keep you grounded. Right. And you know maybe avoid the the unnecessary spending. So Michael, my question is this: because uh, my husband, who's pretty uh, buttoned up with the finance. Is he did this recently, he did an assessment of a whole year of spending mm -hmm. where he categorized everything. It was a lot of work though, to be honest, to figure out how, mu how much are we spending on eating dinner out? How much are we spending on mm -hmm. kids, school stuff, whatever. Um, so how, how can we simplify the process? Um, and and uh, technology can help you. There are a lot of programs that can help you do there this. There are tons of apps that can help people do this. And really, trying to check in you know, once a month, once every two months, as opposed to once a year, is a really helpful thing. Because if we're pulling up those statements every once a month, once every two months, we're not trying to dig out 12 months of data and try to track right. it all the way at one time. So if we're staying on top of it once a month, once every two months, it can go a long way. OK, maybe you took a look didn't love what you saw, got a little discouraged. Mm. What can we do now to turn things around? Well, so now we're halfway through, through, through the year, like we said, and it's kind of like halftime here. Yeah. So if we, if we didn't have a great first half, we can always recover and set new goals for the second half of the year. If we have to adjust the goals, fine. Set new goals if we have to, but keep setting goals and keep striving towards those goals. Let's keep trying to save into the retirement accounts. Let's keep paying off the credit card debt and trying to budget. Again, we'll talk, I think, about in the next segment here, next time I'm back. Budgeting doesn't have to be a bad thing. Budgeting, once we have the, the, the budgeting tackled, we can really make sure we're spending the, the money we want to spend on the fun stuff. Yeah, it's budgeting, it, it seems like such a negative, uh, yeah, just a tedious drag, <laughs> but really we should be embracing it. Like We right, should is, be. You know, a lot of good. people who we talk to at the classes that the charity teaches, they will explain to us, listen, once I have the budget tackled, now I know I have the extra 300 bucks a month of fun money, and I can go spend the fun money with no guilt, with no bad feelings, because I know freedom. that I'm tackling yeah. my other stuff first. Yeah, financial freedom. Tell everybody how they can uh, reach the... Uh, all those classes and all that good stuff that you guys offer. Sure. So retirementplanningedu.org is the website. We've got lots of online videos, white papers, calculators, quizzes. There's a lot of stuff there. Oh, boy. He said quizzes. <laughs> I heard They're it, too. They're fun quizzes. They're I fun heard quizzes. The quiz. <laughs> quizzes. No, but it's all information that we need. Thank no, you, No, it's good. Yeah. we got to figure this stuff out. Of Thank course. you, Michael. We'll see you next hour. Sounds good. Next hour, he's going to say if you have your eye on buying something. Yeah. Do you really need to buy it or should you wait? I have a saying. Making that decision. It's, don't cheat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. <laughs> yeah. as, but once it's in the budget. Once it's in the budget, I love it. Treat yourself. That's, that's wording down. Michael has a different <laughs> saying. Yeah. yeah. His saying has more words. Okay. Right? <laughs>